Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with trigonometric expressions. We have cosine x plus sine y equals 2. So x and y are different angles. Not necessarily, but they could be. And then we're supposed to evaluate sine x plus cosine of y. I'll be presenting two approaches, even though one of them is going to be incomplete. And let's start with the first method. So for my first method, this is a pretty common approach. Whenever we see something like sines and cosines together, we square both sides and then we add the expressions together and use the Pythagorean identity. Get the general idea? Okay. But we don't know what the second expression is equal to. If we did know, then this would be a system of equations and obviously it will be easier to solve for x and y. But we can still solve for it, but let's see how we can do it by squaring both sides. So since we don't have an expression for the second one, I can go ahead and call this something like how about a capital A and then I'm going to square both sides. And when we do, we're going to get the following cosine squared X plus sine squared Y plus two cosine X sine Y. That's the formula for A plus B quantity squared, right? Equals four. Awesome. Now, what are we going to do with this, right? We're going to go ahead and do the second one, sine squared x plus cosine squared y plus 2 sine x cosine y, and that's going to be a squared. Now, obviously, the next step is would, uh, would be adding these two expressions, and then from here we're getting 1 plus 1, which is 2, right? Plus 2 times, and we can kind of take out and write this as sine y cosine x plus sine x cosine y. I always write, like writing the sine before the cosine. I don't know why, but it's just, it's just a habit. Okay? All right, great. Let's go ahead and see how we can go from here. Notice that the expression inside the parentheses is something we should know from trigonometry. This is the expression for sine of y plus x, right? So from here, we kind of get the sine y plus x in terms of a. But let's go ahead and take a look at a 3D plot that I got from Wolfram Alpha, which is pretty good, right? I mean, it just looks nice. Anyways, it's not going to help us solve the problem, but I just wanted to share with you this graph because there was another graph that I forgot to share with you in one of the videos. Remember, we had a system of three uh, variables and then you were um, using it and there was a geometrical meaning, which I, I made a short and shared the uh, graph with you. Hopefully you've seen that. Anyways, so now let's see what we have from here. 2 plus 2 times sine of y plus x equals a squared plus 4. And obviously, we could go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides and divide by 2. That would give us sine of y plus x as a squared plus 2 divided by 2. So that gave us sine of y plus x. Didn't give us uh, the second expression, which is a. So we're trying to solve for a, basically, right? But at least we got something. Now, what happens if you subtract these expressions? Does it help? Well, you're going to get cosine of 2x from double angle formula and then minus a cosine of 2y, and then you're going to get something like uh, y minus x, the sine of y minus x. So I don't think this is going to get anywhere. Um, so basically, this is the method that will be incomplete. And let's go ahead and continue with the method that will be complete. So here's the second method. But let me know if you find anything from here. But at least I tried, right? OK, great. So we have cosine of x plus sine of y equals 2. And now from here, we're supposed to evaluate sine x plus cosine y. Now, since the first method didn't really give me anything so far, uh, can I just work on the first expression? Just forget about the second one for now. How can I approach the first expression? First of all, there are two variables and a single equation. And we're not looking for integer solutions, obviously, right? 
these are going to be probably irrational solutions. So we need to use a special approach. And here's what, what we can do. Sine and cosine are bounded functions. All right. So in other words, sine of an angle is always between negative 1 and 1. And then the cosine of an angle is also between negative 1 and 1. Okay. So what does that mean? It just means that we can replace these with x and y, so kind of like we can replace this with x, and we can replace this with y, and then add these two inequalities because they can be added. And by the way, notice that x and y are um, different, right, in general. Now, what would happen if they were the same? Then you have to be careful because there's a Pythagorean identity that puts these two together. So when you add sine x plus cosine x, this is not going to be true. Make sense? This is not true inequality because x and uh, sine x and cosine x are not independent. But in this case, we can do it. And now this is going to give us sine x plus cosine y is less than or equal to 2. I don't really care about the, the lower bounds because uh, I'm, I kind of have a upper value here, which is 2. So notice that we have the following expression. Wait a minute. This is not what I had, right? Okay, so switch around cosine x and sine y. But you're going to get the same idea. So when adding these, we're going to get cosine x plus sine y is less than or equal to 2. Wait a minute. So in other words, the maximum value for cosine x plus sine y is 2. It's not going to exceed that, right? But we're given that cosine x plus sine y is equal to 2. So if you think of this as a system, you run into an interesting scenario, which means how do you attain the maximum, right? So you can only attain the maximum if both of these are equal to 1. Make sense? So in other words, from a single equation, we get the following system. Cosine x must be 1 and sine y must be 1. Great. Now, this implies x is equal to 0, right, plus 2 pi n. So I can just write x as 2 pi n, where n is an integer. And then from here, y is just going to be pi over 2, which is the unit circle. Think about it. This is where sine is 1, and that's the only point where sine is 1. That's a unique value, right? Plus 2 pi k where k is an integer. Again, I picked different variables so that x and y would be kind of independent, but those are going to be the values. Now, we're supposed to evaluate another expression, right? Which is sine x plus cosine y. So how do we evaluate that? Actually, the answer is not going to be unique, by the way. Forgot to tell you that. But for this, x equals 2 pi n, right? Sine of x is actually going to be, wait a minute, isn't the answer going to be unique? I think so. So anyways, if x is equal to 2 pi n, think about it, 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, so on and so forth, the sine values are going to be 0. So this is going to be 0. What about the cosine y? Well, if y is equal to pi over 2, that's going to be 1 all the time. So this sum is also going to equal 1. Now, I'm thinking about the first method again, and do you think that it's going to give us anything meaningful? Possibly, if you kind of uh, go into the details. But anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.